city of Albany, population 130,577, state capital, and jump-off point for one of the darndest, noisiest, thrill producingest events ever to hit the American sports scene. It's the Albany to New York outboard marathon state. The Deep South couldn't enough, and the Far West couldn't be far enough to keep the outboard daredevils from rallying to the call of another of these great racing classics. Football may have its Rose Bowl, baseball its World Series, automobile racing its Indianapolis, but to outboard fans, the Albany Marathon tops them all. It's the big time of racing to the more than 300 hopefuls who here launch their craft at the Albany Yacht Club the day before the race. The pits look like an aquatic version of Grand Central Station, as dry mechanics and officials do what comes naturally in getting set for the longest, oldest, and largest motorboat race ever held. Back in 1928, when it was originated, the Albany Marathon was for racing hydroplanes powered by special racing motors. Since the war, however, it's been strictly stocked limited to the kind of boats and motors you use for fishing or for a spin around your favorite vacation lake. No, you don't have to be a millionaire to indulge in this grand sport of stock boat racing. With boats and motors priced within reach of all, it's everybody's racing and anybody's race. Check and double check is the pre-race order of the day, as every driver works toward performance perfection. The $6,500 in pure coin of the realm that goes to the winners may account for some of their enthusiasm. Shades of John Paul Jones, here's the 20th century reincarnation of old Ironsides. May she live up to her name tomorrow when the Hudson fires its broadside of debris, stumps, and mud flats at her. There's many a uh, helpful helpmate at Albany, too. Mrs. Michael Crane here journeyed all the way from Owasso, Michigan to serve as first string mechanic for Hubby Mike. Most makes and sizes of motors are to be represented in the event. They're divided into six classes on the basis of cubic inches of piston displacement. That's the fairest possible index of power potential. Boat weight, in turn, is apportioned according to motor size. Class F is for the ponderous 60 cubic inch jobs like this 50 horsepower motor. Class E is next with the 50 cubic inch variety and this 33 horsepower motor is typical. A new class, D, was created especially for this first new large motor since before the war. A streamlined powerhouse is this new 25 horsepower Mercury Thunderbolt. Here's a 22 horse job assigned to class C where 30 cubic inches is the requirement. A fine all-purpose motor and veteran Albany Prize winner as well, the 10 horsepower Mercury. It's entered in the 20 cubic inch B class. This seven and a half horsepower Mercury rockets in the A class where 15 cubic inches or under is the rule. Boats too must be of stock variety. Displacement type family runabouts, say the rules, which means two or more permanent cross seats, no step and such accessories as steering wheel and automatic safety throttle are must. But enough of rules and regulations, let's meet the people. Mechanic Zip Boland prefers semi-formal attire. Derby and Seagar for his hammer and wrench work. Six foot four inch Charlie Mack from Hackensack. No Albany Marathon would be complete without him. On the distaff side is 102 pound Dotty Mayer who has a two year old daughter rooting for her back in College Point, New York. Oldest driver in the race is interior decorator Emmanuel Travers. He's 62, and outboard racing is his hobby. Back home in Fort Wayne, Indiana, he's an oil truck skipper. Here at Albany, he's a red-hot outboard skipper. Herb Crosby taking his mercury-powered runabout out for a not-so-dry run. Fast on the getaway are these trim utility hulls, and some of them hit as much as 40 miles an hour with the right combination of boat and motor. Jim Wilson of Buffalo takes his new runabout and Mercury Thunderbolt out for a shakedown cruise. Hmm, looks like uh, Jim's the boy to watch in the lineup tomorrow. That's fast going. This, as these drivers put their outfits through test maneuvers, 
is a sample of the kind of spine-jolting action that packs every one of the long 136 miles from Albany to 72nd Street, New York. It's rough riding and in rough water. Jumping the wake of the camera boat may seem like a wacky way of whiling away a Saturday afternoon, but it's all part of getting set for tomorrow, as far as these boys are concerned. With some 300-odd king-sized mixed masters beating the Hudson into a foamy frenzy between Albany and New York tomorrow, a little practical experience at keeping deck side up may come in very handy. There are thrills of plenty to this sport of stock boat racing, which has really come into its own since the war. But it wasn't until a light, tough, speedy, 10-horsepower motor hit the outboard scene that such popularity was possible. With the introduction of the Mercury Lightning, speedy pleasure craft like these began to make their appearance on lakes and rivers the country over. And with the American spirit of competition being what it is, it was inevitable that Joe Jones would try to get an outfit that would go faster than Ed Smith's. Soon, stock boat racing circuits and clubs were springing up everywhere. Many of these drivers here at Albany are veterans of just such local racing activity. With this year's Albany Marathon entry list almost twice as long as last year's, it looks like stock boat racing is well on its way to becoming a great national pastime. Sunday morning, June 12, dawn of the 17th annual running of the Great Albany to New York Marathon. Day of a lifetime for the more than 300 drivers and their mechanics who are down to the pits early to see that all is in readiness for the big event. Last minute chores are attended to, official numbers are painted on, fuel tanks are filled, final adjustments made on motors and controls. Here and there, a huddle of drivers feeling the pressure of the big moment try to talk and joke away their jangled nerves. Here's one set of jangle proof nerves displayed as this driver catnaps before the race. There are to be two starts. The big boats getting away at 8.45 and small boats, classes A, B, and C, following at 9.30. 61 miles downriver, the bridge at Poughkeepsie waits like a gigantic milestone. There's plenty of activity here, too, for Poughkeepsie is an official checkpoint where drivers must run in close to be identified or stop, if necessary, for emergency repairs to boat or motor. Inside the Poughkeepsie Yacht Club, Radio operators are set up to maintain constant contact with the finish line at 72nd Street. And they'll report on the progress of the race and relay distress messages from drivers who have trouble along the way. Back at Albany, crowds pack the shoreline to see the start of the biggest motorboat race in all history. And it's just about that time now. Throttle hands are itching to pour the power on the instant the warning flag shows. Upriver, the big boats are massed for the first start, impatiently circling, jockeying for position. Here's what they've been waiting for. The warning flag waves. Every throttle is jammed wide open as they gun for the starting line in a mass sweep. And it's a good start. The first boat crossing the line with a crack of the gun and right in its wake come wave after wave of furiously charging craft. 150 strong, they roar past. The mighty motors join in a thundering battle hymn as drivers call for all the power they have to give, all making a desperate effort to break into the lead that means smooth water and top speed. This is the greatest spectacle on the water as the huge outboard fleet spreads out to blanket the Hudson in its downriver rush. More than 5,000 horsepower is turned loose in a collective blast that rips the river surface into a shredded patchwork of foam and spray. 136 debris and obstacle-laden miles ahead lies the finish line, a real endurance test, not only for boats and motors, but for the men who drive them as well. Old man Hudson will take his toll today. There are mud flats waiting for the daredevils who cut the corners too close, driftwood hiding in the waves and the wash that can smash in a boat bottom. Two miles below the starting line, they begin to string out. 
like a wolf pack on the run. In groups of twos and threes, they settle down to the grueling game of challenge and pass. And it's a real race to the finish among all of the boats in the three big classes. For up front, battling the 50 horsepower jobs on even give and take terms, are those remarkable new 25 horsepower Mercury Thunderbolts, demonstrating even at this early stage of the race, unprecedented speed and power for their size and flat. As the big boats speed toward Poughkeepsie, back at Albany, the crowd stands by for the second start. The small boat takeoff. The light craft skippers don life jackets and crash helmets. With zero hour approaching, they're raring to go. One by one, they start their motors and head up river, there to circle in the shadow of the Albany Railroad Bridge until the starter's clock begins its 60-second trip that ends with the roar of the cannon. The most colossal, the most stupendous, the most magnificent, says the man on the mic as the clock heads into the stretch and the drivers streak for the starting line. Six, five, four, three, and here they come. Spread out wide to take all possible advantage of the broad expanse of river. Coming fast but holding formation well over the starting line. And it's a good start again. There's a group of three boats forming a spearhead with a burst of speed once they're over the line. Well coined is the phrase, hop, skip and jump drivers. For the little boats ride like bucking broncos in water like this. Looking down from the vantage point of the bridge, it's easy to see why two starts are necessary. Some of these boats weigh as little as 100 pounds, fine for fishing on some secluded bass lake, but they'd be swamped in the wash of the bigger boats if all started together. The Hudson is a great race course, and it's also a great proving ground for the boats and motors you buy for your own fishing and pleasure boating uses. And don't think those motors aren't in their pitching. Hour after hour, that power at the prop has to keep on paying off. At 5,000 revolutions per minute, allowing five hours for the course, it takes 1,500,000 motor revolutions to get from Albany to New York. Ten miles below the starting line, and it's a strap among the small boat leaders. Up front is S-25, Don Perdue of Fort Wayne with his Mercury Super 10 providing the power. T-46, a boy from Paris, Paris, Texas, that is, also right in style for the Mercury. Skipping merrily along here, E-139, Pat D, with J.T. Teagle at the controls, and the Mercury seemed up to their reputation. Out on the heels of the leaders comes this group. The first boat is M-299, Art Yost of Brooklyn. Strictly no bum at handling his flashy runabout. Tom Brown in S-5 tries to close the gap. On the far side is New York's own Jerry Goldsmith in N-275, tagging right after them. He's depending on a Johnson 22 for power. Here's the first of the Class A skippers, Tom Crosby of Fort Wayne with a Mercury 7.5 on the transom. Following downriver now, here's a smooth-running outfit. Driver Russ Brennan could sit back and read a magazine. So far, the weather is holding, and the river is smooth. It looks like a fast race. That's a metal boat, J-53, moving right along, handling well. Plenty of homemade boats in the race. Aircraft mechanic Reuben Bloom put M-207 together, and it's another easy rider. So far, the casualties have been few and far between. Al Moriello takes time out to give his motor a drink. He doesn't seem to be worried much about the loss of time. Well, maybe he can make it up. Oh, that one hurt. Fort Wayne salesman Fred Funkhauser dreamed up this polka dot special. She's riding high, wide, and handsome. Down river at the Poughkeepsie checkpoint, the big boats are just about due. All eyes are trained on the first span of the Great Bridge. Coast Guard radio reports a very close race among the leaders. The first of them, it's an F-boat, N-300, that's Vic Scott, the Leviton, New York racing veteran. He took the event in 1947, and it looks like he's trying hard for a repeat today. And trailing the Scott Transom by 30 seconds, B-62, John Whitehouse, 1948, Albany Marathon winner. Up. Oh, here's one for the record books, a D entry. Merlin Culver and his 25 horsepower Mercury Thunderbolt brings him in just 60 seconds behind Scott's 50 horsepower job. Inside the yacht club, the radio operator keeps the airwaves crackling with his first reports on the lead boats as the recorder feeds him the latest facts and figures. 
015 would be J.R. Sharp. He came all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma to do this stuff here today. Giving him a run for his money is Lee Siebert in Y46. That's an easy number to spot, K-51. And it's a southern boy from down Louisville way, Ed Tinsley in the D class. Closely leading C-707, the pride of Fresno, California in the F class. The timer's clock reads 10.37 now as N-224 flashes over. That's gentleman Jimmy Wilson, Buffalo restaurant manager, dishing up some fancy time with his Class D outfit. Neat but not gaudy is this trim blue and white job, N-192. That's George Sweet of Daytona Beach at the wheel. Michigan champ Bill Barry in M-150 shows the way to Renzuela driving D-46. And here's something worth noting. Eight of the first 13 boats through were Mercury 25s, giving away a 100% horsepower advantage to the F boats. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. The first boat into the dock at Poughkeepsie with problems is N270. Minutes are precious, and the troubleshooters are Johnny on the spot, ready to lend a helping hand. They have to be fast to keep their decks cleared for action. Business at the docks picks up as another follows suit. N-245, John Schubert comes in to refuel. No mean assignment is this job of playing nursemaid to more than 300 boats and motors over a 136-mile stretch of river. It's up to the Marathon Committee to coordinate the assistance generously offered by Coast Guard, boat organizations, and private individuals. And still they come in a steady stream. U-66, Charlie Clark having trouble keeping ahead of the man from Owasso, Mike Crane in M-9. Crane gets the wave at 10.46 by the checker's clock. The 75-mile stretch from Poughkeepsie to New York is where we can expect the real story of the race to be told. For there, the Hudson can really get tough. There where it winds down through the mountains past West Point, Bear Mountain Bridge, and then gradually widens into the vast expanse of man-killing water, Haverstraw Bay. But no quarter asked, and probably none given on this man's river. More of the big boats, a brace of Mercury's, Hecken Road in S-51, Ford in B-59, struggling for an advantage as they race past the dock. Here is a candidate for one of the 10 least desirable jobs in the United States, that of keeping the record straight on the boats that pass and the time of passing. Mister, it's a big job. With many of the first starters present are accounted for, the spotter is keeping a sharp lookout for the first of the A, B, and C boats. With smooth water reported all the way from Albany to Poughkeepsie, they should be making good time. And here come some of them now. The leaders are averaging about 30 miles an hour, which is fast time for these classes. But the worst is yet to come. A radio news flash just received has it that there's a strong headwind kicking up in Haverstraw Bay. That, coupled with an incoming tide, spells a rough go to the finish line for some of the frail runabouts. Watching this steady stream of boats coming by under Mercury power, we're mindful of the fact that two years ago, only one Mercury was entered in the Albany Marathon, a 10-horsepower lightning that demonstrated such outstanding speed and endurance characteristics in winning its class that today, a grand total of 140 Mercuries are participating, almost Half of the drivers in the race elected to rely on Mercury horsepower to pay off at the finish line. Fast, just look at them go. Can they take it? Thousands of hours on endurance tests prove that. Can they dish it out? Well, let's check the finish line for an answer to that one. At 72nd Street, New York, just 136 miles from the starting line, the crowd is waiting impatiently. Race reports coming in. Now they want action. And here comes the first of it. First man to get the checkered flag is Vic Scott Leviton, New York airplane inspector who knows the course like a book. Scott lost the lead to Culver and White House at Hudson, regained it above Poughkeepsie, and from there on it was nip and tuck till White House went out with motor trouble and Culver's boat was damaged. It's 1225. Another boat is reported coming in. We should have an E winner here in just a minute. Here he comes. It's not an E boat, it's a Class D entry, N-224, the racing restaurant manager from Buffalo, Jim Wilson. It's all, and that is all, brother. Wilson, using a 25 horsepower Mercury Thunderbolt, flashes over the finish line ahead of 54 of the 57 starters in the 50 horsepower class. 
beats all 38 starters in the 33 horsepower class. He averages 34.7 miles an hour for the trip. And that's nice going, Mr. Jimmy Wilson. Eight minutes behind Wilson, here at last comes an E winner. Wilfred Rogers gets the flag at 12.37. Crowding Wilson for honors in Class D come a pair of champs, Bill Barry and M150 leads, with Bobby Meyer of Kansas City 20 seconds behind in Y30. And here come the Thunderbolts on parade. This 25 horsepower Mercury engine making its debut here today has a revolutionary new construction principle. Four cylinders in line. All the charging power its name implies. And still the green wave comes on. Ed Tinsley of Louisville is in. Walt Case brought his D24 home. Al Hahn and Marty O'Neill of New York are in. George Russ of Norfolk in E35. Report has just come in that one driver, J.D. Ganey, missed the finish line and was headed for open Atlantic when seagoing police stopped him at the battery. Sea winner, Grant Ferris of Hudson, New York, comes in number 46. Class D winner, Jim Wilson, glad to get his feet back on dry land. Jim's a consistent race winner back home in Buffalo, too. And now every winning boat must have the okay of the inspection committee. And every motor, too, gets a careful going over. Just the way the manufacturer sold it, or no win. Crowd spotted the first of the B boats. H-53, it's the Indiana oil truck driver, Herb Crosby, crossing the line at 2.18. Just four hours, 47 minutes away from the starting line for an average of 27.1 miles per hour. His Mercury 10 brings him in ahead of 53 of the 58 starters in the 22 horsepower class. And he beats out a total of 66 of the 33 to 50 horsepower starters. And boy, is he glad to be here. Life on an oil truck was never like this. Another class B entry, S25, Don Perdue of Fort Wayne. He got off to a good start and held his position most of the way. Number three man in class B, Les Carter of East Rockaway, New York, crossing the finish line 13 minutes after Purdue and he idles up to the dock in the money. These Mercuries are built to take the toughest operating conditions. Anti-friction bearing construction is much responsible for their speed and toughness. Full jeweled power, the manufacturer calls it. First in mercury, in every mercury and only in mercury. Race officials busily tabulate results. All but the A boats are in. 137th boat over the line, but still placing in its class, class AN279. And a half horsepower Mercury bringing him home in the money. And so it goes. And it's all over but the long trip home for 300 race weary drivers. But the real spirit of the Albany Marathon was voiced by a driver forced out along the way. A long, rough ride. See you next year. <laughs>